Hey hi everyone welcome to the fourth day of selenium training today we are going to discuss about the basic java operators and string functions that will be helpful for us while writing our selenium scripts so let us discuss about the arithmetic operators first plus sign is used for addition minus is used for subtraction asterisk we used for multiplication forward slash is used for division percentage is used to find the remainder after performing the division let's discuss about assignment operators now these operators are basically used to assign values to the variables so let us take one example if we write a plus equal to 5 it is nothing but a shortcut of writing a equal to a plus 5 so it is going to increment the existing value of a with 5 similarly we can evaluate it for other operators that we see here now let us discuss about comparison operators comparison operators always give us a boolean result let's say less than equal to let's say 10 less than equal to 2 this will give us a boolean result as false so basically comparison operators gives the result either as a true or false so here we can see the example of few other operators like unary operators shift operators equality operators bitwise operators short circuit operators and conditional operators now let us create a class known as operators and see how to work with different types of operators so under our workspace let us create a new class and name it as operators so anything written after double slash is considered as a comment in java it is just used to provide information or explanation it is not executed by the compiler or interpreter we have already discussed what compiler is compiler is used to compile the source code into java bytecode in the same way the interpreter converts bytecode into machine code so here are the operators that we use to compare two values all of this give us boolean result let us print 10 is less than 2 we get the value as false i'll declare int a equal to 5 and int b equal to 5 now let us discuss about double equal to and not equal to operators so double equal to not equal to both are used to compare two primitive data types here we have two integer type of data a and b both have the value 5 since a and b are same if we run the program we'll get the result as true okay and not equal to is the opposite of equal to in case they are not equal this will evaluate to true otherwise false Let's run the program and see the output. Since 10 is not lesser than 2, we are getting the output as false. Since A and B are same, we are getting the output as true. And uh, again, since they are same, not equal to evaluates to false. Now let us change the value of A to 6. And let us print A divided by B and see what is the output that we get. We got the output as 1. Similarly, if we want to print the remainder when 6 is divided by 5 we use a percentage operator b if we run the program now we'll get the output as 1 only in case we don't want to execute the print statement we can put double slash to treat them as comments now let us discuss about post increment and pre increment operators in java let's say int i equal to 100 in the next line we can go ahead and write i equal to i plus 1 and print i we'll get the result as 101 okay since i is incremented by 1 let us take another example int i equal to 10 we will declare another variable int j equal to 20 plus i plus plus let us execute this program and see the output we are getting the output as 30 because this operator first uses the value and later on it increments so if we print the value of i now we can see it is 11 similarly we will take another example to demonstrate pre-increment operators now let us define two variables k having value 5 l equal to 10 plus 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 k so this is pre-increment operator for post increment we saw that first the value of i was used in this uh, equation then it was incremented by 1 but in case of pre-increment first the value of the variable is incremented then it is used so in this case we got the output as 16 so let us discuss how we can create strings and how to use the functions available in string class for that let us now create a new class and name it as string functions now let us see how we can create a string in java 
So all the string literals should be defined inside double quotes. So let's discuss what this means. String is nothing but a class in Java. So let us compare it with our class first. So string functions is the class that we have defined now. Here we can see the name of our class is string function and it is present inside fundamentals package. So fundamentals dot string functions. Similarly, string is a class predefined class in Java, which is available since uh, JDK 1.0. Okay. And it is present inside Java dot lang package. Strings are nothing but a sequence of characters. Okay. This is how we can define a string. Now let us have a visual representation of how this value gets stored in the memory. So for every string literal, we have a string constant pool, which is a special area in Java memory where string literals are stored. So first Java checks in SCP area if the object with the content smart classroom is already there or not. In case it is not there, a new object is created with the name smart classroom or else the existing object is reused. Since here for demonstration purpose, we don't have any object with the content smart classroom. A new object is created with the value smart classroom. So as discussed, whenever we are creating a string literal, a new object will be created in string constant pool and channel name will point to that object. Now if we print the variable channel name, we'll get the output as smart classroom. There's another way of creating a string that is by using new keyword. Now let us discuss diagrammatically how this value is stored in the memory. When we create a string using new keyword, two objects are created. For the literal, one object gets created under SCP. And due to new keyword, an object gets created under heap. We have already discussed about single line comment. To comment out multiple lines, we use forward slash star. At the end, we use star and forward slash again. Everything that is mentioned between this will be treated as comment. Now let us discuss about the difference between double equal to and equals method. Let us create a new string known as learning strings. So here we have two reference variables. One is S1 that is pointing to learning strings object. Second reference variable is pointing to another object with the same content learning strings. Since we have new keyword, so compulsorily two objects will be created under heap. Okay. Let us see diagrammatically. So for line number 15, one object will be created in memory with the content learning strings and S1 is going to point to the first object s2 is going to point to the second object since these are two different objects in memory the address would differ double equal to operator is meant for reference or address comparison if both of the reference variables are pointing to the same object then only double equal to will return true value on the other hand dot equals method is used for content comparison if two strings have the same content it is going to return true else false. So let us see this programmatically. So here, as you can see, we have used double equal to operator to compare two reference variables. As already discussed, double equal to operator is meant for reference comparison. Since these two reference variables are pointing to different objects, it is expected that the result will be false. Let us save the program and run it. Now you get the result as false as expected. Now let us call the equals method. Once I write s1 dot, we can see all the methods that are present inside the string class. Okay. So what is a method? A method is used to perform certain tasks. So now we are going to discuss about equals method. So equals method takes a parameter as another reference variable. So basically we are comparing two reference variables here. And since this is used for content comparison and both the objects have the same content. So it is expected that the output will print as true. So if we print this, the output will be true. So that was the difference between double equal to operator and dot equals method. Now let us discuss about immutability in string. As you can see, learning Java is in uppercase. So in string, we have a method to change the string into lowercase. That is, if we call the method name dot to lowercase, it is going to convert the string into lowercase. Now let us print the string variable and see what is the output that we get? We might feel that the output will be displayed in lowercase, but that is not the case. Let us save the program and run it. You can see it is still displayed in uppercase. Why is it so? It is because of the immutability nature of string. When line number 23 gets executed, an object is created in the memory with the content learning Java. Now when line number 24 is executed, we are calling the two lowercase method present in string class. So once we create a string object, if we are performing any changes, 
with those changes a new object gets created this is called as immutability when line number 24 gets executed a new object is created the content of first object gets converted into lower case with those changes a new object is created but here the name variable is pointing to the first object for the second object there is no reference as of now that is why when we print the name variable it displays the content of the first object only in order to display it in lower case we need to assign another string variable okay now we have defined another string now if we print the value of name l it should display the content in lower case now let us discuss about few important string methods let us work on the name string okay so there is one method known as name dot length if you have a look at this method what it does returns the length of this string number of characters present in the string it is going to return uh, since it is going to be a number the return type of this method is int that is an integer let us see how it works if we call the length method so this is uh, going to give us the number of characters present in this string okay which is going to be a number in order to hold that number we need to we need a variable we will define one integer variable and name it as length equal to name dot length so basically it is going to return the length of the number of characters present in the name string now let us print the length variable output would be 13 so including the space we have the length as 13 now let us discuss about substring method before talking about the substring method we need to understand that each character in a string has an index okay so index starts with 0 so for l it is 0 for e it is 1 for a it is 2 likewise if you want to retrieve part of the main string we go for substring so how it can be achieved let us try to operate on the name string so we will use name dot in the string class we have substring we have two variants of substring method for the first variant we can give only the begin index in the second variant we can give begin index and end index so let's say we want to fetch the value learning out of the string learning java how we can do it as we discussed index starts with 0 so l is 0 begin index will be 0 so basically we include the begin index and exclude the end index let's say i want learning out of the string so begin index will be 0 and end index is going to be the space because i want from here till here excluding the end index so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 end index is going to be 8 because it will be excluded so it will give us uh, the result from 0th index to 7th index as you can see we got the output as learning okay uh, so we have already discussed about equals method it compares the content of two strings now here name is in uppercase name l is in lowercase so let us see what is the output that we get if we run the program we get as false because it is case sensitive now if we want to ignore case there may be a situation where we are reading data column from db or excel we want to ignore the case in that case there is another method known as equals ignore case now if we save and run the program you can see we'll get it as true okay so we go for equals ignore case where case doesn't matter sometimes while fetching the data from a web page there might be cases where there would be blank spaces at the end or in the beginning of the string in order to trim these spaces there is a trim function in string class so let us go ahead and use it name dot trim okay if we save and run the program it is going to trim the spaces otherwise if we don't use trim you can see the output is being displayed like this with the spaces so today we discussed about operators and string functions we are going to work on more string functions as we proceed with the course we will be discussing about loops in the upcoming video thank you